Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott, and today I'm going to show you how you can color your sculpts. Now this is not hand painting, this is a procedural method, and it doesn't work so well in Eevee, it's more for cycles. I'll be doing a lot of weird stuff in Node, so make sure you've checked out my playlist about Node School, so a beginner's guide to nodes. And you might want to check out my quick tips playlist, which has things like camera rotation and rendering as video files and so on. Now the first thing to note about my character, if I turn overlays back on, is that it has separate objects. Now you can color one object with several colors, it's just much more awkward, so it works for objects that are separated out like this. Also, it's worth pointing out to speed things up, I have decimated my mesh. So if I go into edit mode now, you can see it's still relatively high poly, but it's certainly not what you usually have with a sculpt. So back into object mode, you can find the decimate modifier over in the modify tabs, add modifier, decimate, and then you can start bringing down the quality or the polys of your objects. And you just bring it down until you start to notice a big change. So I could have even brought this down a lot further. I'll close that down because I don't want to reduce the quality any more than it is. But if you are exporting to any other engine or something like that, you will want to decimate. Ideally, you retopologize, and the decimate modifier is a very quick, dirty way of doing that. So each of these, if I go into them, you can see that they've been decimated. Now, as I mentioned, it won't work so well in Eevee. If I go across to Eevee, you can see what it looks like, and you can see it's a lot flatter and a bit lifeless. Okay, so let's go across to the shading tab and see what I've done. So if I click on each of the objects, they are all textured in the same way. The node setup looks slightly different, but it is actually the same thing. So let's take the hat, for instance. I'm going to duplicate this with Shift D and just move it off to the side here. I'll delete this texture and create a new one for this hat. It's also worth pointing out that I'm in cycles using my GPU, because that will make it much faster, but I can't use the denoising, the Optics AI accelerated denoising, because I don't think it works with the ambient occlusion node. So if you try it and you get this cancel at the top here, that's probably the reason why. Okay, so let's recreate this node setup. Let's just bring this up first of all and zoom into my nodes a bit more. Now to give it a slightly hand painted look, I turn the roughness right up. And that's pretty much all I changed on the principal BSDF. The most important node to use is the pointiness node. So you press Shift A to add, and it's under input and geometry. So I'll bring that in, and the pointiness is just there. Now in order to see what this node does, I'm going to use the node wrangler to create a viewer node. Now the node wrangler is edit, preferences, add-ons, start typing in node wrangler, and make sure it's ticked. Then close that down, now I can press Control shift left click on this and keep pressing it until I get to the pointiness node and that's what the pointiness node looks like. You can't see much, but if you zoom in, you can actually just about see that some of the areas are lighter and some are darker. So what we need is to boost that effect. So in order to boost that effect, we need a color ramp. So Shift A to add and that's under converter, converter across to color ramp. And then make sure you slot that in here I'm still going through the viewer node at the moment. Now let's zoom in on that. With this, I can then boost the blacks and you can start to see what happens as it creates this sort of shading effect and bring in the whites as well. So the extremities get that white brush as well. Usually the best position is 0.6 for the white and if I click on the black, 0.4. It's kind of a magic number really. If ever you're in doubt, go for that. Now one thing to be aware of, if you push too far, can you see those very black areas there? You start losing the quality of the color information when it gets to this stage. So I'd advise against that and probably stick to 0.4 and 0.6, so roughly around there. Okay, let's zoom out a bit and let's plug that into the base color and Control shift left click on the principal BSDF to see what that's looking like. So if we want a nice white hat, then that's fine. We can take this a stage further using this pointiness node. I'll just bring these down here and we can change the color of our hat. The way to do that is to mix between this pointiness and color ramp and a color. So shift A to add, color, mix RGB and I'll slot that in there. And I actually want this on the bottom one. Now the color here, if I change this to something like blue, like we've got over here, you can see it's just blending between the two. So this color ramp, if I control shift left click on that, you can see it's quite white 
and then the mixed RGB is blending between blue and this white. We don't really want this mixed with our blue, we actually want to use an overlay mode. So up here we have the blend modes, as you can see, blending mode, and there's a really great one called overlay. That will make the dark bits dark and the light bits light. So the dark bits from this will affect the blue and the light bits of this will also affect the blue and make those dark areas darker and those light areas lighter. Especially if I bring up the factor, which is the amount of this being used, we've got that pointiness effect, but we've got that full blue coming through. So if I control shift left click on the principal BSTF, we can see that effect. I'm gonna turn the roughness up a bit more as well. And we're starting to get there. Now there's one more important stage and that's to use this pointiness node for the color. So I'm going to duplicate this color ramp, Shift D, and I'm going to actually plug the pointiness node into it once again, and Control Shift Left Click to see what that looks like. But this time I'm going to use this as the color. So in the dark areas, I'll click on that black and I'll change it to a sort of blue. Somewhere around here, fairly dark blue around there. And now in the light areas, and click on the white here, I can then change the white to a light blue, somewhere around there. So we're sort of increasing the intensity of this, and we can change the color quality as well. Now that's a simple way of doing it, dark blue and light blue, but you can actually do some really interesting things with color. If you understand a bit about color, if I click on the dark blue, blue is a sort of cold color and often used in shadows. If I go to the light blue and click on that, shift this slightly less saturated, that way the shadows are coming across nice and blue and the lighter parts are becoming slightly warmer. Don't worry too much if you don't understand the color theory behind this. If you're confused, just choose dark blue and light blue. But I like to, on the light blue, just desaturate it slightly. Then if I plug the color into here and control shift left click to see the color out, we can see more of a hand painted look. Let's try the principled BSDF now. And it's certainly getting there. It's a little bit light at the moment, but we can go one step further. Shift A to add input and an ambient occlusion node. Now I want to mix these two together. With the Node Wrangler installed, I can control shift and right click and drag, and it creates a mix node for me. And with this, I'm going to use the blending mode of multiply. Multiply is a bit like overlay, but it darkens everything. So any black or dark grays will come across and darken the blues. And if I bring that up, it starts to bring the color down and we've got a more hand painted look. I probably need to adjust my color slightly now. So come across to here, maybe make the blues a bit darker. And I may have desaturated a bit too much. So we can come to this one here and come out slightly. Maybe even go to the purples for this, just to give it a really interesting look. And I'm just gonna mess around with these colors now, having a bit of fun. I like that sort of purple. It's got a sort of magic-y feel. We could even try adding another slot into our color ramp. So just press the plus icon here, and then we can move this one across and maybe change it to a very bright white. And then it's got this sort of dusty look over the top of it. And if I bring these together, then it should sharpen that up a bit, which again gives it that sort of hand painted look. So here's the color ramp and the colors views there. And that's got a nice hand painted look already. There's the overlay color ramp going through this overlay node here, which causes this effect. Then we add in our ambient occlusion, which looks like this. It's only very light that we can boost that up with another color ramp if we want. So let's just copy this one for now. Shift D, drag it into there, go through this color ramp. I'll just bring the whites down and then we've got more effect of that ambient occlusion through the multiply. Probably a little bit too much now with this, but you get the idea. And I don't think I really need the color ramp. So you can press M to mute on that one and then through the principled BSDF and we get this look. Try quickly unmuting that and muting again. Now yeah, maybe that works. Okay, so if I click on the nose, for example, you can see those two there going through the overlay, the ambient occlusion, multiplying those together and coming out the other end. Same with these, although I set up two pointiness nodes, but they are actually just the same. If I hook that up there, it's exactly the same as the other one. So they're all the same and they've all got that style. Looks a bit like he's got a magic hat now next to him or maybe his friend's invisible. Now the very last thing to point out, I suppose, if I go back to layout mode and just zoom out a bit, you can see my lighting setup. I'll just hide the camera setup, but you can see I've got three point lighting. So lighting that goes around my subject like this. Also the shadows on the floor, if I select the floor, 
you can go to the object properties of the floor, go to visibility, and there's an option for shadow catcher there. And it catches the shadows, but again, that only works in cycles. Lastly, there is an HDRI in the background, and pretty much any HDRI will do the job there. Okay, so thanks for watching. Let me know if this was useful to you, and I'll see you next time.